Well, look at that, it's another Gibson video. And by the looks of the comments, this is probably the one that you've been waiting for. This is the 1987 Gibson 4. Okay, so first of all, there's not a wealth of information across the internet about this particular base. Um, there might be some more than I found, but I kind of got tired of looking, and I think I know generally enough to at least give you the kind of basic rundown of, of what this is. So this is the Gibson 4 base. This came out, this, this particular model's in 1987, and I think they ran from 86 to 88, so it's a pretty short life. But these were released and marketed alongside the Gibson 5, which is the same base, but five strings. The, I believe it was called the Q80, and the total Steinberg-looking 2020 model. So this is kind of in that line. Obviously, it doesn't take very long to see that this was trying to compete with the P-Base, um, and I kind of, the way I refer to this base is it's all thunder, no bird, because it's still all mahogany. Um, one difference is it's a set neck instead of a neck through. It comes stock with basically T-Bird electronics, and it's got this incredibly rad, pointy 1987 headstock. So rounding out the standard set of features before we get into the idiosyncrasies of this particular model, uh, we have Gibson branded tuners. They feel pretty solid. Um, like I said, it's mahogany everything, mahogany neck, mahogany body, ebony fingerboard that looks really nice and I love the offset dots, set neck, and like I said a minute ago, it's basically electronically Thunderbird. So it's got two T-Bird pickups, volume, volume tone, and the output jack. And of course it comes with the bridge that was pretty standard and indicative of the time. It's got those roller saddles that roll like screw, thed, screw threads, my goodness, I can't speak. Uh, so you can adjust it by turning it as if it's traveling along a screw. So if you want the string spacing more narrow, more wide, or whatever you might want, it's all done there with the roller saddles. So as a whole, um, obviously that kind of rounds it out. It would appear, I've never played the five, the Gibson five, or styled Gibson V, um, but it would appear as though in the picture in the ad that the nut width on both is, if it's not exactly the same, it's pretty close. Because when you look at the picture side by side, they really don't look all that different other than the extra string, which I know is silly because you could say that about any bass, but that's not really the truth because the necks get wider and the pickups get bigger and just, you know, things like that change to accommodate the string. In this case, it looks like the string was literally the only difference. Now, I could be wrong. It could be a couple millimeters wider, but it doesn't look like it. And the other thing that makes me think that is that this down here in this register, um, the spacing at the nut, the string spacing does feel <laughs> Quite a bit wider than I'm used to, especially if you're into the, you know, jazz bass or stock Thunderbird kind of 1.5 inch nut. This is not that. And it's, um, it's, it's a little fatiguing if you're not used to it.
So I think that just about rounds out the standard uh, features that come across all of the models or all of the you know versions, all of the units. Let's touch on this specific one. Um, first of all, I, I got it used. Actually, I got it as a gift uh, last December. So I've had this now for 10 months and I've kind of been lagging on the video. I'll get to that in a second. Um, but we'll just touch on this model. So this is the natural finish. There is zero nitrocellulose, so somebody satined it out, which is fine. I don't mind that at all. But the back of the headstock, SEC, second. So this must have been some kind of factory blemish because I'm noticing that along most of the metal parts and some of the finish, there's just this little like blue residue all over the place. You can see it at the end of the fingerboard quite a bit. Like, uh, there you go, like Blue Man Group was up here just shredding or something. I don't know, maybe this base was painted at some point and they sanded it back down. I have no idea what all this blue is doing there. But it's okay, it feels good. Like, I like this kind of satiny finish. Like, the, the type of finishes that they were doing between, I don't know, 2006 and 2012 for some of the faded lines, you know, and I think they continued it later. But either way, that kind of faded satin finish feels really good to me. Okay, so moving along to the obvious difference that I'm sure a lot of you are waiting to hear about. Um, when I got this base, it did have a couple issues, um, and we're gonna start by talking about the pickups. Like I said, VVT, two pickups, output jack. Um, the bridge pickup was dead upon arrival. The neck pickup was the only one that worked. The tone didn't seem to do anything, but the volume worked, albeit it was quite scratchy. So I'm already not the biggest fan of those stock TB uh, you know, black epoxied ceramic pickups, which I'm guessing that these were. Um, I know that's, a, that's what they were in the 2000s. So they were probably the same here. I don't know, with maybe slight tweaks to the design. They're okay. They're just not my favorite. So surprise, surprise, I went with my favorite. I put EMGs in it um, for two reasons. One, because again, I know a lot of the cynics are not going to believe this. I actually, th these are my favorite pickups. I like them. I'm not getting paid by anybody to say it. Okay, I'll move on. Um, the other reason is I had these laying around when I did the Thunderbird pickup shootout video. So these are the TBDCs. Um, this, it's the DC pickup, the one that you find in most Schecter's inspectors that come with EMG soap bars. It's that pickup in a Thunderbird housing. And then again, like I've said before, um, not patient and I refuse to solder. So rather than get a stereo barrel jack and solder this to work there, I just took this out as I'm one to do. And I went a little bit different. This is a concentric volume tone uh, and a pickup selector. Put a little Les Paul poker chip and then I just put the output jack here. I don't really need it to be anything else that works just fine for me. And luckily, most of the people that I've had over here, Chuck, Dave, Nick, whoever else comes over to, to play this, um, is quite impressed with the tone. And obviously that's, you know, a lot's gonna have to do with the pickups, a lot's gonna have to do with the placement, um, and a little's gonna have to do with the material. So I think all in all, the sum of all of its parts, this is a great tone, especially for pick, which luckily I am. Um, not that it sounds bad with fingers, but there's just something about the pick sound that sounds really full and just good.
and finally, the biggest issue with this base, the reason that it's taken me 10 months to get to this video. Upon receiving this base, there was quite a significant bow in the neck. So I just figured let's just tighten the truss right up a little bit. Should sort itself out. And it did in what uh, has commonly become known as the cash register, the money notes, all in here where you're most likely gonna play all is well. However, when you get up kind of towards the 11th fret through, I don't know, just kind of, let's just call it this area, the neck is twisted. So this note, that's what it's gonna sound like. That one too. Okay, maybe a lot, there we go. And then it starts to go away. Despite me liking a little bit of a lower action, um, that's a little much. And then we're back, we're, we're good again around 15. So I would say 10 to 15, little twist. This is low and comfortable and good and I like this. This is a little bit of a problem area. So therefore, um, I'm not comfortable like letting Chuck play this live just because I don't want him to hit a sour note and have the band look at him. Point being is I was trying to figure out how I was gonna go about this because I did the pickup swap so I could at least kind of hear both pickups and play it and hear it in its full potential, electronically speaking. I reached out to Brandon Jones, who's done a little work for me and a lot of work for Chuck and does a great job every time to kind of see what he could do with it. Um, one option he proposed was re-leveling the fretboard, which I'm, I don't know if I want to go that route. Um, I found another option where I can send this to a guy in, I think, Texas somewhere to where he'll heat treat it and straighten the neck back out. He did some work on this short scale Thunderbird and it came out great, but I don't know. Even though I bought it on Reverb and it was shipped to me, it's like I'm not psyched about taking it to FedEx or UPS and you know what I mean? Like that just, at one point I'll get to it. But the reason I waited so long is because I was on the fence and I wanted to present this good to go. Um, but instead I'm presenting it with a slight neck twist, which I mean, if you own older Gibsons is not unheard of, it happens, you know, and, and luckily this affects it in an area where you're not gonna be playing that often. So for now, I guess I'm not really in a hurry to do much about it. Um, because again, when in the notes that matter that you're gonna play, it, it performs and sounds great. I believe that's about all I have to say about this bass. Um, obviously you saw it in the Megadeth collab video. You've seen it in a handful of demos. You've seen it a lot in this video. And that's about all I have to say about that. So I hope you enjoy, do all the YouTube stuff. Thank you for watching and I will see you whenever it is that I see you.